It has been 366 days of Arch Linux, and I haven't broken it. Uh, not from a lack of trying either. We've done PCI pass-through. We shrink and grown every single partition on the system drive. We've done custom kernels from Zen, Bazite, LTS. You name it, we have done it. We've done multiple desktop environments from KDE, GNOME. We've done multiple window type managers and different compositors. We've gone from, uh, geez, uh, Xorg over to Wayland and done Hyperland, Sway, i3. We've just been everywhere and this thing just won't die. Almost disappointing. But at the same time, credit where credit's due, you arch developers out there, you have ascended in my book. You now are gods amongst men and women because, wow, I haven't broken it. It's been over a year. Insane. And I'm great at breaking things. Before we rewind the clock a couple years, Arch, you would have been fully broken by now. Now, having said that, we did encounter some bloat doing all these shenanigans. The first thing I like to do is just open up your, your terminal. And from here, I like to just do like LSBOK. Now, yours is going to be much more succinct and, and more there. You probably don't have six different hard drives like I have. And you might be thinking, Titus, why do you have six hard drives? Because I can. And that's the beauty of Linux. <laughs> probably should get rid of some of these. But uh, needless to say, six hard drives. Um, and why I do this, and the thing to really focus on is the mount points, this portion. It kind of tells you where things are mounted. So I have three partitions on an NVMe drive that I use on my Linux. Um, and it, it shows you the size right here. It's two gigs for my boot partition, 200 gigs for my root partition. And then where most things should live is in the home partition. Now, new Linux users, honestly, you're going to just kind of be writing crap everywhere. So enjoy. This is where the D bloat begins. Understanding this concept is really important for the next command I want to teach you, and that is df-h. Where and how are we using our drives? Because a lot of times what happens as you use Linux, and especially Arch Linux, uh, you start using like AUR and other things, and it starts to bloat up. It starts to add a bunch of packages as you install more things. Some things install improperly on Linux, and some things install great and are tidy in the home folder. But uh, it just depends on what that is. Uh, I want to give a bunch of examples here, but the first thing I want to do is look at the correlation between our LSBLK and our disk free. First off, the root partition, this is where like all the system files, everything's located. Super important, this doesn't run out of room. Right now, we're only using 20% of it. Now, this used to be 100 gigs, and I filled it 100, like, completely to the brim and I couldn't update my system. So I expanded that partition. Now you don't need to do that. Honestly, I didn't need to do it. I just was like, ah, well, I'm here anyways. I might as well. But let's say I didn't want to expand that partition. What I found was I wanted to run commands that would actually fix things. So what I did, and I have a little cheat sheet. In the cheat sheet here, um, kind of go over some of the stuff I've done, but the bloat of time section is really where the meat and potatoes are. The thing I want you to run is ncdu, and this is kind of what I use. Now, you don't need the exclude time shift or even exclude media if you don't mount a whole bunch of drives. I mount all my external drives to forward slash media. Uh, that includes network shares like NFS shares, Samba shares, those types of things all just get put into this one. And then all my backups are in dash run time shift. And I don't want to be gauging that size because one, deleting things from there, probably not advised from terminal. Also, uh, time shift has its own GUI, which we'll get into here in a second. So I'm going to take that command and we're going to just uh, paste it in here. So we'll just go copy and we're going to paste. This command is going to run ncdu. If you don't have ncdu, it's, I think it's no curses, disk usage is what it stands for. And it'll go through and scan your entire drive and say, hey, where's everything stored? So what I found when I was going through, I was like, oh, OPT. Now this is like a, I don't know if it stands for option, but that's how I think of it in my mind. Sometimes certain programs get installed in here. And these programs, I think, uh, kind of live outside the operating system, aren't necessarily tightly integrated. Sometimes they can blow it up and they add more crap in here. 
what happened was a program called Olama, which is used for LLMs that you run locally, uh, bloated up and installed a whole bunch of modules here uh, or uh, models. And those models kind of filled up my whole root drive. So I had 60 gigs worth of Olama and I was like, well, I'll just purge Olama. And then I just went into OPT and deleted the Olama directory and I got all my space back. But if you go forward, backwards, you can kind of go through and say, hey, where's all my, where's all my files? Dot local? Why is there one terabyte in dot local? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I got these games installed and you can see exactly how much is being made. Now you could delete them here or you could launch Steam and delete them, whatever you're, whatever you're fancy, but you can easily kind of browse through your entire drive and kind of figure out, hey, where's all that space going? And it's a great tool. Next up, flat packs. Now, sometimes you don't want to install things on your system. And this really is applicable to a lot of Steam Deck users. Most Steam Decks use flat packs like a lot uh, because you couldn't really, it's an immutable file system. You can't really install programs directly on it, but you can use flat packs, app images, and other things. So, what you can do to check to see, hey, what flat packs am I doing? You can go flat pack list and you can kind of see, hey, what am I using? If there's a bunch of crap there that you don't need, then uninstall it. Or let's say before you do an uninstall and just kind of have to guess, because some of these are dependencies of like gear lever. That's what I use to actually manage my app images. It's kind of funny that that uses most of my flat pack, but that's neither here or there. Gear lever is an amazing program. If you use app images, use gear lever, change your life. Anyways, uh, getting rid of flat packs. Let's go flat pack uninstall. But instead of picking the program, we're going to go dash dash unused. Flat packs actually smart enough to go through that list and say, hey, this is just an old dependency and you got rid of the main program. So what I would do is find the programs that you know you don't want in here. Not ones like these right here might be dependencies. And I think are dependencies of other flat packs. But if you see something in there that we like, oh, yeah, I'm not using that anymore. Uninstall it. So what an uninstall would look like, let's say we want to get rid of flat seal. We'll go flat pack, uninstall, and then we're just going to take flat seal from here and put it down here. And this would go through and uninstall that one. Then we can run it again. Uh, I, I'm not going to uninstall flat seal. Flat seal is an amazing program to manage permissions on flat pack. So let's say you want to give one flat pack permissions to a certain area of your thing. It's a great GUI tool to use for that. Separate video, I think I've already have a video out many years ago about it, but really amazing. Anyways, that's cleaning up flat pack, kind of just the root loose files and manually installed programs in OPT. The next thing is whatever you use, you could use Paru or Yay to update your system. So you're used to this command where it goes out, downloads all your files and says, hey, we got a bunch of updates. What do you want to update? Um, I, I think Arch has been on like a, a terror lately. So I just... Anytime I come in here, I'm like, yeah, sure. Let's let's go ahead and update. It's a it's a Monday. Probably shouldn't update this on a Monday. I like to save my updates for Saturday, but you know, um, I don't want to get in a whole tangent on updates. I just say update once a week, and preferably on a weekend is what I've always done my entire life, as I've been burned by doing updates on the daily. So uh, we're gonna actually ignore my advice right now. We're just gonna go through this update just so you can kind of see a standard update from Arch. But during this update process, you're gonna see stuff get added to the cache. You see dot cache from, this is gonna be home, your user, and then dot cache, and then either Paru or Yay. Typically put all these packages as they build and you update your system, they get added into this cache folder. A lot of times this cache never really gets cleared out. So I got a great command for you after I let this update. It'd be pretty hilarious if this actually crashed, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let this finish update and, and then we're gonna run this special command to kind of clear out that cache and uh, reclaim some space. And if you haven't run this for months, eh, you might get a sizable amount of stuff because some of these updates in Arch are like five gigs. So <laughs> I've even been had an update the other day. I, I actually went, uh, months without updating Arch, which you should never do technically. Uh, but I was like, I want to break this thing. And uh, after a couple months, it updated just fine. And I was like, all right, cool. And uh, I think the update size was almost eight, eight gigs. So kind of insane. 
Uh, but the update was most of the stuff I installed. I have a lot of programs, a lot of gaming, custom kernels, and other things I do in my system uh, that aren't necessarily um, most Linux users would do. So that's why my updates are rather large. And you did not just see, I'm still using Google Chrome. I'm offended. I'm sorry. Take my tech card from me. That's fine. Uh, however, let's fin finish this and we're going to run this clean command. And we're done. Now, since this did rebuild this, the actual kernel, uh, a lot of people in the Linux community would say you never need to reboot. Well, I mean, technically, if you replace the kernel, I always like to reboot. Uh, if you don't have like a Linux kernel upgrade during the install, you probably don't need to reboot and you can just run the command. So I would like to go, this is this is it. Basically, it's yay dash S Y or S uh, capital S lowercase CC. And this is going to clean the system. Now, you could also do Paru, uh, Pac-Man. Uh, I like to use an AUR helper, which is either yay or Paru for this because it will clean all the packages. So you hit this and it says, hey, we're going to clear out this entire thing. Do you want to remove all these files from cache? You say yes. And then yes to all unused directories and then also remove all packages from the cache yes and this goes through and kind of cleans all those out so let's say you haven't updated you let's say you updated your system like four or five times over the past three or four months it's not uncommon to see a dot cache folder upwards of 10 20 30 gigs in size with just a whole bunch of cache files so that's why why it's having this command is really important to kind of see where you're at from uh, a disk space usage. Now, since we rebooted, uh, let's, uh, uh, that we actually updated our system, let's reboot just so we can see the glory magic of it all. All right, here we go. Uh, Bazite is where we're gonna go. Uh, I actually switched the Linux Bazite kernel to play Oblivion. The stock Linux kernel was crashing on the Oblivion loading on my Linux, and I switched to the Linux Bazite kernel, and funny enough, not only did Oblivion play, but a lot of other games I was having trouble with, such as I think it was Helldivers 2 was also a problematic for me. Switching to the Bazite kernel, fixed it all. So uh, that's great. And uh, I'm protected by the wolf. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, let's see what we got. All right. Uh, I actually purged all my display managers, so my login's kind of ugly because I just thought, Display manager's bloat. Why do I need it? So I just got rid of the display manager. And I know my system's very, very basic now with the DWM setup. I'll have to go back into it. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that or not. Uh, one last final tip I'll leave you with is time shift if you use it, which you should be backing up your system. But if you are, make sure you go through and clean out any old snapshots and old time things and set up a proper one where it might be capturing two or three different restore points depending on your policies but uh, if you have a whole bunch like 10 20 of them you don't need that many snapshots on your system or maybe you do but important to go through uh, you can highlight multiples and then just hit delete and then it kind of clears out and kind of makes a more sensible uh, time, time shift system so like uh, on time shift back up your system but I don't need that many backups, right? <laughs> uh, maybe maybe back up your system before doing a full system update. But I like to live on the edge. And Arch, just fantastic. Love you guys. It's awesome.